name, spell it, it's Ronald Sonier, S-A-U-N-I-E-R, the commander of Major Crimes Division here with the Police Department. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to kind of preface this uh, press conference with this is still a very active investigation. We're still in the early stages of it. We wanted to get with you with the information that we have so far and kind of give a little timeline of everything else that's going on. So yesterday about 1.25 in the afternoon, officers responded to the 3000 block West 37th Avenue on a burglary in progress call where a homeowner jumps some parties. Uh, that particular call spurred a lot of officers to cover into the area looking for suspects in that burglary call. Uh, at this point in time, we're still working to, you know, confirm or, you know, not sure that it's going to be related to the second one. Uh, about 1.40 in the afternoon, another officer uh, calls out that he has potential another burglary going on in the 1300 block of West 34th Avenue. So the officers that had already responded into the area begin saturating this area and uh, the officer kind of stayed with uh, the evidence that was brought out of the house. There was also a vehicle that was located running in the alley behind so he remained with that. Other officers covered into the area and then an adjacent alley to that. A couple of cars came down there with officers in them. One is going to be an unmarked car. Uh, it was being followed by a marked car. Uh, they spotted two suspects that matched the description of the, the burglary on the 34th Avenue. They went to contact those parties. Uh, one party was taken into custody in the alley. The second party fled from that scene. Uh, both of these cars were two officer cars and the passenger officer in each one a foot pursuit of the suspect that fled from the area. Uh, that suspect fled kind of between the houses, headed over towards Moncrief. Uh, one officer continued up the mouth of the alley to Lowell and then kind of made a left turn or head south back, back on Lowell. Uh, the other officer kind of started cutting through the houses, came on to Moncrief about mid into that area. Uh, the suspect and one officer become engaged in you know, a exchange of gunfire. Uh, the officer at that point is hit and calls out. And then the uh, other officer at the same time is coming out from between the houses and winds up kind of seeing what's going on, confronting the officer. There was another exchange of gunfire there. Uh, the suspect then continued to flee westbound on Moncrief up to Lowell, where he then kind of cut across the parking lot headed towards 32nd Avenue at, at or near the intersection of 32nd and Lowell. He confronts a party that is just turned on to that street and winds up carjacking her at uh, gunpoint, taking her out of the car, gets into the car. There is uh, some more gunfire that happens right at that location. The vehicle then takes off. Uh, the district officers, district supervisors, and command officers authorize a pursuit. There's a short pursuit that goes on, uh, goes up uh, 30 or goes up low to 38th, down 38th. As the suspect is coming back up on to uh, strikes a tree and some other things, comes to arrest. He then exits the vehicle at that point and another exchange of gunfire goes on there uh, where that party was uh, pronounced deceased in the scene there. Uh, so that's pretty much kind of the layout that's there. Like I said, we are still working. I'm not uh, ready at this time to say if the 37th Avenue burglary is related. We're still working on that. Because of uh, that investigation going on, we will be withholding the party that's arrested mugshot. Uh, my direction to my investigators is, you know, to get that photo array done and then we'll get that out to you as soon as we can but we do need to uh, do a little bit more follow-up with that go ahead and open it up to any questions or are you releasing the name of the suspect who's deceased or is that that's going to be released to the coroner's office so they have to do their family notification and verification so that notification will come through the coroner's office how is Rachel doing? Uh, she was released last night 
at home, I have not talked to our Norse commander, and others from the department have talked to her. So I did talk to her briefly last night, and uh, we still need to get, you know, interview and stuff from that side. Is this Troy Ide's uh, daughter, by any chance? I don't know on that. I can't answer. I guess at this time we'll go ahead and confirm because her name's out there. It's, it's uh, her in District 1, I believe, on the SCAT team, and it's Rachel Ides. Rachel Ides is her name. Uh, the release of the other, a 24-hour period, we want to make sure that, you know, we're letting them know that their names are going out, and like I said, we still have a lot of the investigation that goes into why we're releasing it. So. Were any of the other officers, will they be put on leave? Administratively, they're, they're the same stand based on kind of administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation, which we is heard, standard for each of ours. We've heard from other residents and, and looked on the, some uptick in burglaries in that area. I know you can't say specifically, but are you looking at the possibility that these two suspects could be? I mean, the, throughout this investigation, we will be looking at, you know, if they're related to other burglaries, we still, you know, have some search warrants and everything else to vehicles, but yes, that will definitely be part of the investigation as it on goes. If, you know, they're related. She was shot in the foot is inflicted. It is not a self-inflicted wound. It would, uh, I can make that very confident. Can you talk about this um, information? Is that something that you guys are looking at? Are there, I mean, do you have any numbers or anything? I don't have the numbers on that. I would have to, you know, refer to the PIOs, but I know that, you know, during this incident, we had at least two that were going on, and, you know, so we will be going back looking at one right now is kind of a description from the first one and the description of the parties that we have and like I said the, the connection between the area they did have the, the you know special team up in that area saturating the area just to address this area when they came across the second one I'm not comfortable at this time saying those two are related or not we just have more investigation we need to do. What do you say about the uh, criminal history? Uh, they have, uh, both suspects have a pretty extensive criminal history uh, once the party was on parole, I know, uh, but did have quite a bit of violent criminal history. Is that the one that's still alive? No, the one's still alive. Do you have an approximate timeline of the first burglary and the second burglary? How first many? burglary got called in at 1.25 p.m. Officers were dismissed. Uh, and then at 13 or 1.40 p.m., the officer comes across the second car exiting with evidence in his hand and uh, flees from there. So. And how's the department doing today just having so many officers been involved? It has been a rocky thing going forward. I think we're dealing with it the best we can. Uh, you know, it's fortunate that, you know, it was the ones got a gunshot. It was very critical and a long process going forward with that. So, you know, we deal with that, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Did you say that in the uh, the first, well, the second episode, I guess it was the first episode that the uh, homeowner jumped. That he wound up calling calling in a burglary in progress. I'm not even sure that it was an attempt or if it was an act of that part of the investigation. We were here last night, uh, late hours, doing lots of video in interviews. We had lots of civilian witnesses brought down in there. Like I said, I want to thank you know everybody that was involved out there. Had a lot of people come. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you.